They were very eager to cover their good deeds from the eyes of people. The same way I may cover my sins from the eyes of people, Allahu Akbar. They were the enemies of Riya showing off. And they were people of ikhlas, sincerity. And that is why Sulaiman ibn Mahran al-A'mash, he says that I was once sat with Ibrahim al nakhai and a man came in and Ibrahim rahimahullah was reading the Quran. فَغَطَّ الْمُصْحَفِ وَقَالَ لَا يَرَانِ هَذَا أَقْرَأْ فِي كُلِّ سَاعَةِ He covered the Mus'haf when the visitor came in. He covered the Quran and he said, I don't want him to see me reading the Quran every hour. Allahu, sincerity, covering the good deeds. And Ayyub ibn Abi Tamim at Sikhtiyani, he would pray at night. And then when the Fajr, the son of the Fajr would come up, he would begin to yawn and stretch, showing his family that he had just woken up. كَأَنَّهُ لَمْ يَقُمْ إِلَّا مِنْ تِلْكَ السَّاعَةِ Sincerity. Allahu Akbar. And Amr ibn Thabit narrates that Ali ibn Hussain ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, when he passed away and they were washing his body, كَانُوا يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَى جَسَدِهِ وَوَجَدُوا آثَارَ سُودِ عَلَى ظَهْرِهِ They noticed on his corpse that there were black lines, black bruises all over his back. And they discovered that he was the one who used to carry the heavy containers of food in the middle of the night, passing it over to the poor people of Medina in secret. They would only discover it on his deathbed. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So they were sincere people and they would hide their deeds and they were very, very honest with themselves as well. Imam al Dhahabi narrates that Hisham al Dustuwa'i said, ما أستطيع أن أقول أني طلبت الحديث يوما أبتغي به وجه الله عز وجل. He says I cannot claim that I ever went out searching for Islamic knowledge purely for the sake of Allah. I can't claim that. And Imam Al-Zahabi says والله ولا أنا. Imam Al-Zahabi says I can't make that claim either as well. They were so sincere and they were honest. They were afraid because they knew that admiration and arrogance and wanting people to see the good that you are doing for the sake of Allah, it may cause your good deed to be rendered null. And you may meet Allah Almighty after 50, 60, 70 years thinking that you had bowed and prostrated and given dawah and Yawm Al Qiyamah not a single good deed is written to your name. Do you worry about this my brothers and sisters? I worry about it. I worry about it. And sometimes I think to myself, how many of my actions are accepted and how many will be rejected by Allah Almighty? I may be standing on very thin ice in terms of my Iman, but I think that I'm standing on solid grounds. Do you worry about this? If you worry about this, my brothers and my sisters, I give you a very accurate litmus test, a ruler, a benchmark, which you can use to measure how sincere you truly are in terms of your actions. What is this litmus test? Allahu Akbar. Ibn Asakir, he narrates on the authority of Hudayfah, the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the companion who was given by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the names of all of the hypocrites of Medina. Only Hudayfah. Hudayfah, he was given the secret information. So a man, he comes to Hudayfah and he said to him, Ya Hudayfah, hal ana min al munafiqeen Oh Hudayfah, I have a question to ask you. Am I a hypocrite? Did the Prophet ﷺ mention me as being one of the hypocrites who are going to the fire? Is that me? Rather than saying yes or no, Hudayfa, he gave him a criteria, a ruler which he can use so that I can benefit and you can benefit as well after him. What did he say to him? He said to him, أَتُصَلِّي إِذَا خَلَوْتْ وَتَسْتَغْفِرْ إِذَا أَذْنَبْتْ do you pray when you are alone? And do you ask Allah Almighty to forgive you when you commit a sin? He said, yeah, I do. So Hudayfa said to him, اذهب فما جعلك الله من المنافقين He said, go. Because Alhamdulillah, Allah has not made you one of the hypocrites. So look at one of the conditions he gave him. Do you pray when you are alone? This is what I mean, my brothers and sisters, by the litmus test that I must use on yourself. If we want to measure how sincere we actually are, is our Iman real and genuine or is it dependent upon the praise of other people? What percentage of your actions are in privacy, in seclusion, in khalwa with Allah? Are all of your actions in public? 
We do many things. We give da'wah. They go out every week. They give da'wah for the sake of Allah Almighty. This is still a public act. Measure this against your private acts. If your public acts are heavier than your private acts, then you are to be worried. You may be standing on very thin ice. What percentage of your good deeds are in privacy? And what is the status of you, your Iman when you are alone with Allah Almighty?